Hi, I'm Alex Williams, Enterprise Writer at TechCrunch, here at the first ever Data Center Hackathon. First ever data center hackathon. I feel pretty safe in saying that. I'm here with Sarah <laughs> Siegel. So. Yeah, Sarah definitely, Siegel. right? Yeah. Sarah Siegel of GrabCAD. Now tell us what GrabCAD is and what does this say to you about where we are today with data centers, the internet, mobile devices, you name it. So GrabCAD is an online mechanical engineering community. We have over 400 thousand mechanical engineers and designers on our site and we're really all about open engineering so we have an open source CAD library with models that you can no longer need to reinvent the wheel you can come find something and build off of that I think that it's almost like a reusable IP in a way exactly so I think the same thing is happening here at the hackathon where they're saying wait we don't need to have this closed system why don't we open it up a little bit use things more as a building block so that we can increase that pace of innovation and in turn get so much more out of what we're doing and bring that to people who wouldn't necessarily have that capability otherwise. So that kind of relates to mechanical engineering. Maybe you're like a small design firm and you don't have the manpower to be creating everything on your own all the time. So you come to this library, you find one of the models that are there, uh, use it in your project. It, it really kind of saves you time, increases what you're doing. So um, in the, at the same time, we have an online collaboration tool. So you're no longer limited by where you are in the world. So something that's really interesting is being able to come find people with similar interests and start a project with them. In 3D Online, almost. in 3D, we have a 3D viewer, so wow. you can come see everything right on the browser. Really cool. Um, it just really opens up the possibilities of what people can do. The capabilities that data brings to the equation, yeah. we're trying to manage the data, but what it brings to the equation as well yeah. is interesting and kind of in this context because that that's definitely kind of like who it's affecting here, you know, yeah. in this community. So I think what's really interesting is we're on both sides of that big data experience where we want to be part of the solution where people are, you know, building physical designs to kind of handle big data, but at the same time we're producing all of this data as well. We have all this user generated content. Um, we're, we're taking information in, so we want to be part of both uh, the progress on <laughs> the structure, the infrastructure, right. um, but right. at the same time, let our community grow, let that get right. bigger. Yeah, right. so it's kind of interesting. Yeah, it is. So what are you seeing? What, what's interesting for you here at this event? What's interesting to me here? So actually, one of the teams I think is a really cool situation where they came with a kind of pre-thought out idea. They already had some materials that they're working on, so the Nebula guy is right behind us. and. One thing they did was they came up to me and they're like, I, we could really use a mechanical guy to kind of take our idea to the next level. So what's cool about a hackathon is you have all these different disciplines working together to get stuff done. So we just went to another group, grabbed somebody, hey, this is what they're working on, wouldn't it be great if you just help them out a little bit? And so he joined their team and now they're kind of set to produce even more at the end of the event. Are they, did they change direction at all because you know, with his influence in the equation? It's more. Uh, they can produce more deliverables at the ah, end of the event. Okay. So I think the mechanical part would have been more theoretical because they didn't have anyone to okay. work on that. But now they can like produce something substantial on that end. What do you think is the outcome of all these, you know, different projects in the long term? It's the outcome of all the projects. Well, in the long I mean, term. these are hackathons. These are things that can be applied into data centers. Yeah. Right. So, so I think um, in the keynotes we heard earlier that. Not even, what, 12, 18 months ago, this idea was kind of just being born. So if people are already taking these ideas and putting them into practice in these huge corporations like Intel, then these ideas that are being born today, who knows, like 12 months down the line, they might already be in use, practically being used, and then the next hackathon, you know, you keep building on that. So I think... Um, like Tim O'Reilly was saying, 
you don't even know the possibilities yeah. of what's going to be created yeah. next. Yeah. Yeah. Just uh, look at that next meta, right? You know, exactly, and that's what's really... I think that's why an event like this has that kind of inspiration level yeah. as well, because people see all these possibilities. Sarah, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank Thanks. You are, you know, with a group that is going to be hacking away for the next 12, 18 hours or whatever. What is it that you guys are going to do? So, yeah, so um, the idea comes from uh, my daily life at a startup in uh, Soma called uh, FilePicker.io, and we track a lot of statistics, and we have a hard time sometimes seeing what's going on. Um, so the idea is to create a physical display of important stats. Um, so that means, like, if one of our servers is not feeling well, a physical pointer is going to point on a gauge that goes from server feeling well to server sad. Yeah, giving it some personification almost, so it's like a, a real immediate visual. Yeah, absolutely, and, and definitely like there's going to be something interesting about seeing the physical change in our environment other than just the number changing on the screen. So right. it should get our attention a little bit better. Right. Now, I've actually been, I actually wrote a story about some work that's being done where like almost like the nodes serve as like their own social network. So if like one node says, you know, I'm not feeling so good, and is and the, the nodes that in that community might say, well, you know, I'm not feeling so good either, you know, and so then it surfaces up to the technician who can say, can see all these kind of like, you know, likes in the way, you know, like that, that everyone's not feeling very good. This has some context to that. Yeah, for sure, and, it, and it's, you know, one of the things we always try and figure out is like, okay, how's our service doing right now? And sometimes that's a very hard thing to determine based on all these little messages that the servers send in private. And you sort of get desensitized to all of this error information because you get a lot of it when you're yeah. working on a, on a popular web service. It's yeah. like, oh man, it's just another number. So the idea would be to pick that key metric that you'd be like, uh-oh, red light, it's time to change things. And actually either show a physical red light somewhere in your space or you know, maybe in the open compute example, on the top of a rack, where you've got like red light, yellow light, green light, you should probably look into what's going on here. Right, yeah, interesting. So this is kind of fun, isn't it? Have you, I mean, you don't often see hardware hackathons, and this seems like the very first kind of data center hackathon. I mean, you know, and is it, is it uh, different for you in any respect? I mean, do you, do you participate in a lot of things like this? What makes it unique for you in terms of your own your own innovation as well. I, I think the focus on the data center and the focus on like uh, infrastructure is really, really unique and really fascinating. I think while it may seem kind of strange to see a bunch of software guys playing with hardware, from my experience, it's getting more and more common. And, it's, and now that the tools have gotten so easy to make this hardware, building something in six hours that can talk to a web service and then output something either to a motor or to an LED is like totally realistic. Yeah, um, and it's going to be like really, really interesting to see like how fully formed the things are that come out six to twelve hours from now. Right, and the people I've been talking to, they say that really is the great challenge today, where you're seeing some of the brightest minds congregate around the need now, where you, the software and the hardware, do need to talk a lot more than they ever did before. I mean, because you have multiple operating systems with small devices and such, you know, and, you know, large infrastructures and the communication there, you know, and just the, the network is gigantic. Yeah, and I, I think, uh, you know, if I, if I were really into the buzzwords, I would be like, hey, this is Internet of Things for the data center, but I'm not. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think, I think this kind of thing is, is, is going to become really, really popular. You know, like if there is a real problem that an organization has, and the data center is built on open architecture and open technology, showing up, uh, you know, and saying like, "Hey, let's build something that helps us improve our day-to-day -day, like workflow, that lets us know what's going on with our servers in a few hours," becomes realistic in a context that is more personable. For sure. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, thank you, David. Appreciate you taking some time. Yeah, really great. Thank you so yeah, much. Have fun. Yeah, definitely. All right.